Hi, my name is Eric Stinson. I'm with Juniper's product marketing team. I'm here today with Manish Gupta, who is our director of engineering for our containerized uh, routing product. Um, hi, Manish. How are you? Hi, Eric. Yeah, so today we're, we're going to talk a little bit about um, egress peer engineering. We had mentioned that on a vlog uh, just a little while ago on our introduction vlog. Um, so as, as we're all aware, uh, you know, the usage of cloud services have been consistently growing over the past 10 to 15 years. And the growth has recently ramped up, uh, you know, with remote work, with additional business applications, uh, increase in streaming services, you know, both uh, personally and professionally. Um, a lot more things moving to the cloud. Um, and that, that growth is, is likely to continue. So really, cloud providers need a way to increase efficiency. Uh, so one of those ways to increase efficiency is through egress peer engineering, um, otherwise known as EPE. Uh, and, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about that. So Manish, you know, would you mind explaining a little bit about EPE, uh, you know, how it works and, and what the benefits of that are? Sure, Eric. Uh, and as you said, I think more and more applications are moving to cloud. And uh, the users, uh, the end users are also moving and getting more mobile. And this, the cloud phenomena is uh, helping connect the user to the uh, cloud applications. Now, let me explain how the end users get access to this cloud application. It's, it's, it's through the internet as we all know, but between the user and the application, there are several networks, which is part of the internet. Now, over the years, the connectivity problem is of course solved. I mean, every cloud service is delivered over the internet, but there are still a lot of challenges with respect to the performance and challenges in terms of uh, jitter, uh, the latency, the congestion in the network, and all those uh, network properties lead to bad user experience, and those are the problems to be solved. Uh, let me give you example of few applications like uh, streaming uh, applications, but we all watch videos uh, that requires a tons of bandwidth and that gets impacted by congestion in the network. Uh, video conferences, like all the Zoom meetings, Teams meeting that we are doing during this COVID time, that needs a lot of latency property from the network. And then uh, the gaming applications, which are getting more and more popular, uh, requires all these performance characteristics from the network. Now, uh, how do we solve these performance aspects? And one of the uh, technique or technology that helps there, as you said, is egress peer engineering. Now this uh, uh, technology or uh, uh, you know, solution helps optimize how this traffic flows between the application and the end user between various networks. Yeah, very good. So you know, the, the common implementations of EPE in the industry today are typically in hardware routers or virtual routers. Uh, and, you know, there's, there's obviously some challenges uh, with both of those methods. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what those challenges are? Yes, and uh, we have a lot of deployments of EPE on the hardware devices uh, or the networking devices that our customers have deployed. And uh, there are a few challenges with that approach. It solves a lot of problems. So it's... Uh, uh, but the couple of challenges that I see is it, A, it brings a lot more state on these network devices because now the networking devices have to make certain decisions based on applications. So it makes it more complicated. And uh, the second challenge, which is a bigger challenge is all these cloud applications are already cloud native. And that makes it uh, them very flexible and elastic. So they can move around uh, through their data centers based on load and demand. While the network is relatively more static and it cannot be provisioned at the same pace as these cloud native applications can be. So it creates a lot of challenge when these applications are uh, cloud native while the network is not. Now, more recently, I think we have seen some of the virtualized solution that kinds of 
helps a little bit towards this challenge, the second challenge I mentioned, but it's not fully solved. And that's what uh, I think we are trying to do where we want to solve it completely in a cloud native manner, just like how these applications are working today. The networking should exactly work in a cloud native manner to solve these some of these challenges. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and like you say, that's kind of where we're going today with our cloud native routing, um, you know, building that routing engine into a container. Um, you know, so why we did it is, is, you know, to meet some of these challenges. Can you talk a little bit about how that meets some of these challenges, um, you know, and, and why it's kind of better than, than some of these other solutions that are available in the market? Sure. And um, to do that, let me uh, show the picture uh, where how a typical network operates. So as you can see on this picture, uh, on the left-hand side, we have a typical data center where we have these uh, servers which are hosting the cloud applications, be it the streaming applications or other compute applications. And then we have these border routers which are connected to the internet and through internet are our end users. Now, uh, and in between, there could be other switches or other routers to connect these servers and border routers. And the border routers uh, further connect to internet through those peering uh, uh, things or transit network, or sometimes they go through those IXPs, internet exchanges, right? Uh, the, the tough part of this delivering these uh, cloud application is you're going over the internet, which does not guarantee any SLA because it consists of several networks as I was showing in my previous picture. So when the traffic comes through these data centers and tries to reach the end user, it has to make certain decisions, which particular peer uh, it needs to go through to get the best user experience. Now, how we solve it is by uh, putting the routing intelligence next to the application on the servers in form of CRPD. And uh, once you have the network intelligence right there, what happens is these border routers, which I have shown here as ASPR1 and ASPR2, it exchanges the network connectivity to CRPD sitting on the server. And there are a lot of mechanisms. Uh, one of those mechanisms is via BGP LU. And then there are other mechanisms like in segment routing, we have BGP prefixed to provide that connectivity uh, information to CRPD. Uh, and the third leg of all the solution is the controller that I have shown in the picture, which is actually taking the feed from these border routers and trying to figure out which particular traffic path, network path is giving the right uh, properties that application needs. So it's taking in the uh, telemetry information from these border routers, a lot of uh, connectivity information in form of BMP protocol and a lot of uh, data sampling through these standard protocols like IPFIX. Uh, based on that, it knows now which particular network path is going to give the properties like best latency, uh, avoid congestion, or, uh, you know, uh, other things, uh, or even the cost, because uh, sometimes cost becomes a factor. And then based on those uh, things, it passes on certain in, uh, information to CRPD, which is in the form of, again, BGP. So it changes the next hop of those BGP service routes and pass it on to CRPD, which is running on the servers. And once CRPD has this two set of information, one, how to connect or resolve this transport to the right peer, and then from the controller, which service route needs to go through which peer, it resolves those application routes or the end user routes uh, through those optimized paths. And when the application tries to send the traffic to the end user, it pushes the right information onto that traffic in form of 
like some metadata and you know depending on the kind of tunnels that are between the servers and these border routers and we have uh, multiple uh, tunnels that I'm showing here, you know, MPLS over GRE or uh, SRV6. And uh, that metadata, once it reaches the border router, it knows what to do with that in the forwarding path and forwards the traffic to the right peer. Now, as I was alluding to earlier, that the same problem, if we had to try and solve it on these border routers via EPE, there would have been a lot of state with respect to the application flows, which would make the solution more complex. And in this, with CRPD running on the server, what you have done is actually moved all that state right on the host so that application and networking are completely in sync right from the source, which is the server. And as this applications moves around in data center or even across the data centers, that intelligence in form of CRPD is also moving around with the application. So as you can see in a nutshell, what we have done here is uh, move the network intelligence next to where it matters, which is the application. And uh, the combination of this uh, uh, CRPD running on the servers along with application uh, makes it much simpler and much more optimized. The whole egress peering solution, right, becomes right. So, so that's that's how we we try to simplify and optimize the whole EPE uh, in this new cloud native world. Well, great, Manesh. That's uh, that's very informative. Thank you very much. And I can definitely see how you know um, doing it in this method. It really will help out anytime you can simplify and optimize it's always uh it's always key in an infrastructure especially something you know like a cloud infrastructure where they have to handle so much traffic um, and with all the growing traffic you know handle it handle it uh more efficiently so you know again thank you very much for your time um this has been great uh thank you all for watching and manish just before i go i really like the shirt um i think that's you know that's great now you know we all understand it it, you know, you know what you're talking about. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Eric. Uh, thanks for having me and bye. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Take care, everybody.